Okay, let's start. Good morning. And welcome to Mind the Movement, Mind the Moment, Tuesday morning gathering, brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. My name is Greg Topakian, longtime mindfulness teacher for Harvard Pilgrim's Mind the Moment program. It's nice to be with you uh, this morning. Usually uh, on these sessions, we start with a uh, meditative question to which uh, you can choose to respond in the chat box. But today and also for the sessions tomorrow and Thursday, we're going to follow a slightly different format. And that's because um, I have difficult news for you, this Mind the Moment community. Many of you uh, perhaps already know about it. And that is that uh, Suzanne has passed away. Suzanne was engaged with cancer for the last year and a half working with it, being with it, trying her best to heal with it. Tried all types of treatments, none of which were, were able to help her enough. And last week her body came to a final rest. Suzanne was very private about this issue. And so for many of you, this is shocking and distressing news. And I'm sorry for all of us who will no longer have Suzanne in our life. For those of you who have been coming on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, you know Suzanne was a force in these sessions. Practicing mindfulness brought her great joy. She loved it. And sharing the teachings with you, even more joy. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, she brought incredible energy, enthusiasm, and love to these sessions. And when I had a chance every once in a while to share the space with her, it rubbed off on me, it was always very special. And over the last few years, she became a dear friend. So I thought um, we would first just sit quietly together for a minute or two. Any of you who are moved and some of you already have to uh, express feelings in the chat, please do. Make sure that in the chat box, it's addressed to everyone so we can all read your feelings and thoughts. So let's sit quietly together. And again, if if you feel moved to write in the chat box, please do. Finding a comfortable position for yourself. Checking in with the body. Adjusting posture. Shifting weight to the right and left, forward and back. Perhaps rolling the shoulders. Letting the head bob back and forth. Feeling the sensations of the body. Coming into the present moment. Knowing that this posture can be a place of safety for you, a place of refuge, a place of peace.
slowing down the body and mind, settling the body and mind. And experimenting with allowing whatever life presents to you and to us to, to simply let it be there. To know it. And as you're sitting, I'll just read a few of the chats. I've been thinking of her so much since hearing of hospice. This is so sad. She inspired me so much in her grace in the face of illness. May she rest in peace. I am saddened to hear this. She was so impactful on my own healing journey. She will be deeply missed. Suzanne was exceptional. This is so sad. Greg, thank you for sharing this and leading us through this. I am so heartbroken. I am so grateful for her guidance and will miss her. When we heard the news of Suzanne's passing, Tara Healy, the director of this program, along with her teaching team, thought it would be appropriate to dedicate this week's sessions to Suzanne, memory, and all that she brought to this program. What a joy it was to know her. So my thoughts for today were to try to call up what I thought Suzanne might want for this half hour together. And what I came to, what came to me, is to simply practice mindful awareness, our wishes for peace and safety, our experimenting with allowing whatever life presents to us to be there, to be present for it. to call up our feelings of gratitude and to know the beauty of offering kindness and compassion. These would have all meant so much to Suzanne. So I'd like to dedicate a practice to her that touches on all these dimensions of our practice. So I'll invite you to come into a comfortable position for yourself again. Turning attention to your body and its sensations. Seeing how you can adjust posture, shifting weight left and right, forward and back, stretching the spine, rolling the shoulders. Letting the head bob forward and back. Noticing your body speak to you. How alive it is. Coming into the present moment. Appreciating that this posture, these moments of coming into the present moment with care and attention is always available to us. Place of refuge, safety. And how important it was to Suzanne to help us connect to this space safety and peace. And 
noticing the body speak to you in all the physical sensations. But also experimenting with allowing awareness of the thoughts that come up into your mind and the feelings, the heart, and body. Today's news may well be that the thoughts and feelings are a knowing of loss, feeling of sadness, despair even perhaps, grief, denial. Our task, our aspiration in this practice is to make space for these feelings, however difficult. Knowing that they are only a part of being human. It's normal to feel them when we experience the loss of a dear one. At the same time, it's an opportunity for us to still bring mindfulness to the experience of loss. Because for many of us, when we're sad, the mind will often generate negative and pessimistic thoughts. Life is unfair, life is horrible. Why is it only the good suffer? I'll never recover. And our task as mindfulness practitioners is to notice these thoughts. Notice them arising. But no, they are just thoughts and they're not necessarily true. Honoring, yes, I hear you, I see you, thoughts. But let me return to the direct sensations and feelings of this moment. How does sadness show up in your body? Mindfulness can also help us know when sadness is present, when grief is present, when it's becoming too much. And it is the wise and compassionate thing to do for ourselves to turn back to our place of refuge, our place of safety, the breath and the body. No need to punish ourselves. We're spiraling down to that place of refuge when we need a breather, when we know we need a breather, always available to us. Even in this difficult time, Suzanne would, wa would have wanted us to feel appreciation, gratitude for all that is good in our life. Not to forget our good fortune, our gratitude for knowing Suzanne.
having these sessions with her. To be present for the teachings of mindfulness, which she offered to us. We feel that gratefulness, that appreciation. And perhaps to also feel grateful for all the people in our lives who care for us and want the best for us. And Suzanne would have helped us to tap into the beauty of the offering of kindness and compassion. May you, Suzanne, feel peace as you travel through this transition. May you, Suzanne, touch on all the expressions of goodwill directed to you from all the so many people who loved you and want the best for you. Kindness and compassion to Suzanne's family and dearest friends. May your loving memories help you to hold and heal from this difficult time, from this sadness. May you, friends and family of Suzanne, also hear all the expressions of love and affection directed to Suzanne and to you. May you, family and friends of Suzanne, including all of us, be kind and patient with ourselves as we live through these next days. The next two minutes, perhaps in silence, cycling through these practices, the body finding peace, settling the body and mind, Allowing for sadness, calling up gratitude, knowing the beauty of offering kindness and compassion. And if it hurts too much, know that it's it's okay. It's human to feel these feelings.
May you be well. May you feel peace. Even in the midst of these sad human experiences, May I intentionally call up feelings of appreciation and gratitude for all that Suzanne offered to us. And our wish, her wish, Continue to pay that forward. To others. Some additional offerings in the chat. I believe her spirit and intent will continue to serve us, though her physical body is no longer with us. As a community, her work will not go unnoticed, unrealized. Absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad to hear this. I'm so sad, so sad to hear this. My condolences to Suzanne's family and to all of her mindfulness family who knew her. She was a bright light and a steady voice of calm. Someone said it best last week, she was a special friend that I have never met. She was a wonderful soul that gave so much of herself in these sessions. I was inspired by her in so many ways. I miss her already. Sending love and support to her family and friends. Losing a work friend can be so difficult. These people become a special kind of family as we spend a large quantity of our waking hours with them all. Hugs and peace to the mind the moment family. And you find comfort in each other as you reminisce about time spent with Suzanne. She will be deeply missed in this virtual space.
Suzanne provided a safe place here. She will be missed. The space to honor Suzanne is so meaningful. I see her smile. All those moments you let us in mindfulness practice. Suzanne was the embodiment of love and light and kind, thoughtful energy. I am so grateful that I've had her for my teacher. I will miss her beautiful smile and carry her in my heart. Can we acknowledge and honor our feelings as we continue with our days? Can we aspire to live life as Suzanne would have hoped for all of us? Make a noble effort. For all of us ordinary human beings, may we continue to find time to help settle down this body, mind, and heart. Learn how to allow whatever life presents be here for us, to be known by us, And may we aspire to meet each moment with wisdom and compassion, balance and equanimity. So best wishes to all of you. Be well, take care of yourself and others. Take care.